So welcome everyone. Thanks for being here. This is our second doctoral meeting on our space on the PhD program on our space science and technology. Today we're going to be um, discussing about propulsion and the space environment. We have uh, seven presentations of uh, seven PhD students, namely Alberto Marin, Alberto Modesti, Enrique Bello, Jesus Perales, Mark Ricardo in Chingolo, in Chingolo, sorry for the pronunciation, uh, Pedro Jose Jimenez and Tatiana Perotin. Um, they are doing different PhD theses on um, uh, electric propulsion, both numerical and experimental, and they're going to be telling us uh, what they have done so far in the first, second year of their PhD thesis. The goal of, of these doctoral meetings is to, to gather together, to, to get to know what the PhD students are doing, for you PhD students to share your progress with your supervisors, a qualified audience uh, in, the, in the department of the people, but also your peers, other PhD students, so that you know you can you can also get to to know what others are doing, uh, have discussions and, and foster collaborations and, and exchange of ideas, which is a very important part of our research. Um, so now, having said that, uh, I would like to thank you all for being here to present my my work on my PhD thesis about two-dimensional model of wall interaction in Hall effect thrusters discharges. My name is Alberto Marin and my tutor is Pablo and my advisor is Eduardo. I'm also working in collaboration with Enrique Bello and I have received some, some help and some advice from uh, Adrian and Filippo, which I guess that they are all here. So the contents of this presentation are going to be divided in these uh, different sections. First, I will give a, a short motivation of this work. Then I will present my thesis plan. I will show them the, method the methodology I'm going to use and the simulation code that I'm planning to develop. Then I will show some, uh, some results just to give a flavor of the time of the type of uh, analysis that I'm preparing for my for my thesis. And I will wrap up everything. I, I will uh, show some uh, current and future work that I'm planning. So, so to start with, I will uh, like to talk about the uh, Hall effect thrusters, which is the main the main uh, motivation of my study, which are the uh, which are the leading technology uh, in this in the electric propulsion sector. They are mainly uh, composed of an annular chamber with magnetic coils and an anode and a cathode. The magnetic coil generates a magnetic field inside the chamber, and the potential difference between the anode and the cathode generates an electric field. The neutrals are injected from the anode backplate and get ionized within the chamber. When they get ionized, uh, they become positively charged, and they, they are named ions, which are accelerated due to the electric field. Ions have a dual uh, uh, mm, uh, 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 Thing that they have to do, they have to ionize, they have to neutralize the ion beam and ionize the neutrals within the chamber. This technology is very well known and widely used, but there are still some open problems that have to be solved. The two more important ones are plasma wall interaction and anomalous transport. I will be covering plasma wall interaction, and my colleague Enrique is going to cover anomalous electron transport. So as I have already said, the main goal of the thesis is to uh, talk about to cover. Uh, uh, plasma wall interaction from a theoretical point of view. Why are we interested in studying plasma wall interaction? Well, because it is uh, responsible for important energy losses, ion recombination, wall material erosion, and some uh, authors even claim that they can be uh, an important part in anomalous transport. Uh, and uh, why is challenging to study? Why nobody has already solved this problem? Well, because the, 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 the plasma inside the whole effect thruster chamber is weakly collisional, and we don't have thermodynamic equilibrium. So in order to uh, solve this problem, we require to a full characterization of the species velocity distribution function. So uh, in the state of the art, I'm going to talk about uh, the simulation codes that we are currently using at EP2, which are mainly hyphen and EP2 plus which use a hybrid formulation. What means hybrid formulation? That it uses a kinetic or peak for, uh, formulation for heavy species, so the velocity distribution function is solved for them, but it uses a fluid formulation for light species, like electrons. And we only have information about macroscopic magnitude. 
fluid formulation is not suitable to study plasma well interaction problem because it makes already some assumption about the velocity distribution function shape. However, kinetic studies plasma is computationally very expensive because we have to solve very small uh, length scales, very small time scales, and all the different species have very different dynamics. So in order to reach a, a steady state for all the species, we still have to resolve time scales of the order of uh, the electrons, but we have to wait for ions and neutrals to, uh, to reach that steady state. So having that said, we are going to uh, develop this thesis plan. We are going to start from a 1D radial, uh, simplified radial model, and we are going to uh, study some interesting features and some interesting things about uh, plasma wall interaction. The first thing we want to do is uh, analyze macroscopic uh, transport equations and how they are affected when the velocity distribution function is not, is not much Willian. Then we also want to include anomalous transport and see how it affects plasma wall interaction. Other very interesting thing that has not been very widely uh, studied is how the oblique magnetic field uh, affects the radial plasma dynamics. Moving on to a more complex scenario, we are going to develop a 2D uh, radial axial simulation code for, uh, uh, with a peak formulation. We, in that way, we can simulate axial effects on the radial dynamic and uh, uh, study more complicated magnetic topology effects. In the end, the main objective is to get a full characterization of particle and energy fluxes to the world and the different conditions. Uh, as a very last step, we want to build a bridge between the fluid and kinetic formulation and derive macroscopic equations that take into account all the important effects that we have seen in our peak simulations and try to include into the fluid models. The two simulation codes that are going to be used in this PhD thesis are a 1D radial full peak model named SPT1DR and a 2D uh, radial axial full peak uh, simulation model. Uh, the, the, the 1D model is uh, only resolving the, the, the problem in this uh, thick black line in this whole effect thruster sketch. Uh, it is due it, is, it was developed for the analysis of the radial plasma dynamic in a very simplified scenario of in, a, in the acceleration region of a whole effect thruster. The simulation with this model are uh, computationally affordable. Now, when affor uh, speaking about affordable with a typical simulation domain of one, one 1,500 radial nodes and over 200 particles, simulations take around five days to finish and to reach the state. I was not starting from zero in this model, and the code was already developed by Adrian Dominguez within his thesis, and, what, and was based on a previous code by Francesco Tagogna. Now, moving on to the 2D radial axial code, uh, it will represent a more realistic uh, scenario because it includes uh, uh, axial effects on the radial uh, plasma dynamics, which, which could not be simulated when, with a 1D radial model. It is expected to be very computationally demanding, and uh, the, the peak formulation that is going to be used is going to be based on already uh, uh, already well-proven uh, modules of hyphen and EP2+. So in order to show uh, other previous studies that uh, were already done previously, uh, we can see here how the velocity distribution function is not mass Willian. When, when we are uh, analyzing these plasma wall interaction problems. In fact, there are also secondary electrons coming out of the walls that have totally different dynamics and also affect the velocity distribution function shape. As a consequence, uh, well, as some of the consequences of this, uh, of this phenomenon, the, the, there is an electron temperature and isotropy, which means that the radial temperature for electrons is totally different than the, 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 the perpendicular temperature. In order to give a flavor of the type of results that I'm, I'm going to be uh, getting from, from my thesis, I want to show some uh, results of a simulation with anomalous transport in the 1D radial model. Why are we including anomalous transport in our 1D radial model? Well, because experimental data shows an electron cross field transport that cannot be explained only by the action of classical collisions. And this anomalous transport is mainly attributed to azimuthal plasma turbulence. 
Since in our 1D radial model, we are not explicitly simulating the azimuthal direction, we need a phenomenological model to include uh, this phenomenon. Two main uh, phenomenological models have been widely used in literature, isotropic anomalous collision and anisotropic anomalous collisions. So both of them are going to be implemented in this 1D, uh, 1D radial model. The final objective of this work is to analyze the effect of the different anomalous transport model on the velocity distribution function and macroscopic transport equations. So here we are proposing three different simulations. One without anomalous transport, one with the isotropic anomalous transport model, and one without, with the anisotropic anomalous transport models. As you can see here, when we, can, when we calculate the, the, the electron velocity distribution function at the mid radius, the, the, the results that we are getting are uh, totally different from the Maxwellian solution. Furthermore, we can also see that the results uh, from different models give different results. So we can conclude that anomalous transport models have an important effect on the electron velocity distribution function shape and plasma wall interaction. Regarding non maxwellian velocity distribution function effects on the macroscopic momentum equation, we started seeing these uh, weird uh, undulations in the axial electron current density. This, uh, this, uh, mm, this macroscopic magnitude comes determined by the electron momentum equation, which particularized for the azimuthal direction gives an explicit relation for the axial electron current density. Plotting the different terms uh, acting in this balance, we can see that the dominant term, which is induced in the oscillation, is, comes from the divergence of the momentum flux tensor, which was kind of unexpected at the beginning. This momentum flux tensor is, can be expressed as the addition of a momentum flux tensor plus a pressure tensor. Uh, here, the term that, uh, that, that was uh, important in the previous uh, equation is the term R theta, which is going to be the magenta line and the red line. Uh, here, uh, we can see that the, the momentum flux tensor, uh, R theta, is uh, dominated by the pressure tensor contribution, which is typically named as the gyro viscous term. Uh, and this, uh, this undulating uh, PR theta term uh, is able to transmit its undulating character to the axial electron current density. What happens is that these terms are often neglected in fluid models. So this effect would not be captured by fluid models if we, if we would have tried to solve this problem in that way. But are these uh, undulations physical or is it just an uh, artifact that we are getting for our, simpl for our simplified 1D model? Well, they seem to be somehow related with uh, near wall conductivity, which was um, already re reported in 1990s by Bugrova. So this is uh, one uh, profile for, from this experimental study, and this is our uh, simulation. However, they used to explain this, uh, this behavior due to secondary electron emissions from the world. Well, we saw from our simulation that it is not due to that, but it is due to uh, the uh, non-mass Willian effects in the equations. Uh, uh, in order to wrap up the results, we, we have to say that uh, the, 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 this, uh, some part of these results were already presented in, in this conference, in the, in the SPC conference, and we are planning to, uh, to present some advances in the 2D code in the, in, in the, in the IEPC uh, conference uh, this summer. We are preparing also two papers, one, uh, one with the results including anomalous transport and one with uh, simulation with an oblique magnetic field. Uh, what is the future work? What, what I will be done in the, in the next year? What I'm planning to show next year? Uh, well, I'm planning to show some development and some advances in the 2D simulation code, which are going to be done in collaboration with Enrique Bello. Uh, the most important steps to, to do? Well, we have to develop a personal solver library to calculate the electric field acting on the plasma. We have to develop the peak algorithms for boundary conditions and surface interaction. We have to work uh, a lot on implementation of Monte Carlo collision and direct simulation Monte Carlo for simulating collisions within our simulation code. And we want to compare the, our, our results with the 1D radial code for validation. 
a la very interesting thing is to 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 so, to, do, to parallelize uh, this code because as I have already mentioned, it's going to be very com uh, computationally expensive. So without parallelization, this simulation would take forever. So a very important step here is to to have a good parallelization and being able to solve the problem within a reasonable time. Thank you all for your attention. I and I will try to answer any any question you may have.